Sonia, and thank you everybody for coming along today for the, the webinar on the Higher Diploma in Engineering Analysis and Technologies, what we're calling the HD course. Um, so, as you probably know, the, this is a Springboard Plus course and it's actually been hosted by Dublin City University. Um, a couple of small points about DCU. We're ranked in the top 2% of universities worldwide. Um, a particularly key aspect is we're ranked 19th in the world's graduate employment rate and we're one of the world's leading young universities, so defined as a university of under 50 years of age. And um, we're also one of the top 100 universities globally for social and economic impact. The Higher Diploma in Engineering Analysis Technology is going to be uh, jointly offered between the Mechanical Engineering and Electronic Engineering schools within TCU. Um, key aspect is that it's actually based on our Mechatronics Engineering course, which has been running since 1998. So if you're not too familiar with Mechatronics, it's kind of a it sits at the intersection of electronics and mechanical engineering, and is particularly um, applicable to uh, applications like laboratory automation, um, analysis, uh, programming. Um, uh, it's very, very multidisciplinary. So it gives you a little bit of both of the kind of key uh, engineering specialties. Um, and we're offering the uh, HD course, um, is particularly to focus on a lot of the analytical fundamental skills that you'd need for the modern uh, engineering workplace and the uh, modern employment, uh, or sorry, mo modern industries. Um, in particular, we know that the knowledge and skills that are in the course are in high demand in industry, and I think it will give a strong foundation for future innovation and research as well. So, the reason for the HD course is that uh, the workplace is becoming increasingly automated um, and engineering roles are often focused on analyt solving analytical problems and particularly analytical problems which sit at the intersection of mechanical engineering, electronic engineering and software and computer engineering. So what we mean by that is if you go in for jobs in particular industry, you a mechanical engineer may be going in just purely to design a, a new um, machine which will be used in automation, but they won't be involved in specifying the electronic rule or the, the actuators, the motors uh, to control it or the software interface. So a little bit of my own research is in laboratory automation. So when we design a laboratory instrument, we're not just designing the mechanical instrument, we're looking at uh, how that instrument communicates with the internet, which is electronics, and how it communicates with online databases, which is computer engineering. So the modern engineer needs to be able to address all three of those aspects for the modern workplace. So things like modern pharmaceutical companies. And um, it's also that the skill sets you learn here, which will be critical, primarily critical thinking and problem solving, will translate very easily into, say, software engineering, such as working with a, a, one of the major uh, uh, social media companies or things like that as well. So it's a very, very, you'd be learning a lot of fundamentals, which can be applied across a wide, wide range of, of different uh, future career paths. So the way we like to put it is that we're offering you platform independent learning which means that you can get transferable engineering skills and transfer them across a wide range of different industries uh, for your future career. So briefly an overview of the program, uh, we're divided into two semesters. So uh, semester one and semester two, but obviously there'll be six modules in each semester. And what you'll see is that there's quite a strong focus on problem solving and maths, uh, support uh, software programming, and uh, things like embedded systems, okay? And I'll speak to those in just a, a little bit more as well. Um, so another thing to note is that because this is integrated into our first, second, and third year undergraduate mod Mechatronics module, um, you'll be taking your exams with those students. What that actually means is that in the first semester, the, we're under guidance because of the ongoing COVID-19, that there'll be no exams for first, second and third year students at the end of semester one. 
So these four or these six modules in the first year will actually be uh, pretty much 100% continuous assessment. Whereas there will be likely be an exam either online or in person related to at least some of the semester two modules. So of the three streams that we've like kind of identified, um, the main one is actually mathematics and problem solving. So you have four modules in this area. So things like numerical problem solving, we've got two core mathematical modules, which cover things like um, ordinary differential equations, and then uh, Fourier series, Fourier transform and Laplace transform, so called S-space. And then um, the last module then is a statistics-driven module, which is data analytics for engineers. And this is a very key module for future employability because data analytics is becoming a very, very um, growth area across a wide range of different, um, different uh, uh, industries. Um, the other second major stream is computing and software. So um, you learn about software development for engineers, which is the, the key basics of software architectures and you learn C programming, but obviously that then can be built on by yourself to learn other languages in the future. And um, we'll have, uh, you learn, operating systems, so Linux, Unix, uh, things like memory management, and then there's embedded systems. So this is becoming increasingly important as well. And this is embedding microcontrollers. So even things like simple as an Arduino controller that you may have bought yourself, uh, FPGA systems, uh, setting up peripherals, and um, you'd be working on say, how to multitask from embedded systems. So if you're not familiar, a Windows PC, is a regular system, but an embedded system runs software that's very specific for controlling a, 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 a factory robot or a machine in a factory. And the, embedded, the advantage of the embedded system is that it is excellent reliability and excellent timing. It can't be impacted by a virus, for example. And, um, and they're also very low cost as well. So that, that would be a key topic that you'll be studying as well. Then um, the general, uh, around those two key really fundamental areas, then there's kind of a more uh, diverse uh, number of other topics. So we have um, energy and introductions to thermodynamics, which is basically teaching you about energy, heat transfer, and um, it also looks at global warming, the ethics of fossil fuel power versus renewable and nuclear energy sources. And um, it'll teach you, if particular, if you're not coming from an engineering background, it can be very important because you just learn the really, the really important basics of this specific aspect of engineering. And um, you'll in design and CAD, you'll work primarily with SolidWorks and um, to design. Uh, or to, to address a number of challenges where you learn to design uh, different components and a particularly emphasis on things like dimensioning and tolerances. So as an engineer coming out of this course, you won't be going into a workshop to make something, but you may be designing a component that needs to be made by a workshop technician or a, a fitter or a tool maker. So, um, the fact that you can actually communicate with them by providing them with well-documented um, uh, designs for the parts that you want made. You may be subcontracting these manufacturing, but you need to be able to, to mention things appropriately and, and it's a really key uh, skill set to pick up. And um, you're also gonna work on systems. So this actually is a little bit, could have been put under one of the mathematical analysis um, topics. Um, so it's effectively, calculating the dynamic response of systems. So kind of things like uh, springs and mass balances and the mathematical modeling of systems, uh, a little bit to do with transfer functions, which you would have also studied in the maths four module. And then you have a module on pneumatics and control. So that's kind of um, how they can be integrated into laboratory or into um, factory automation. And then finally, a really interesting module, which is in first year, and the module actually runs over two semesters, but you'll only be taking it in the first semester. And it's new enterprise development. And that actually takes a completely separate view from engineering. It's really, really important. It actually teaches some of the business aspects of engineering and particularly um, things like if you want to start your own company, 
or if you wanted to see if a, a component could be commercialized, you learn about the different tools that are available that have been developed. So things like commercial case feasibility studies, business plan development, market analysis, elevator pitches uh, to get people to invest in your company. And even if you never went the kind of, I'm going to do a startup, the fundamental learnings that you get really helps you when you get into industry that you can kind of talk to the accountant. And if you're pitching a project that you want to, to be funded as an internal project, you can do, this gives you the tools to um, do things like uh, uh, figure out if this is value for money so that you can convince your manager to invest and that you can do cost benefit analysis, things like that. So um, just generally a little bit about the delivery. Um, primarily in the first semester for sure, we're going to be doing online delivery for in-person laboratory attendance. So the delivery is going to be paced over a 10 week semester. Um, our hybrid delivery mode is basically there'll be video lectures through Zoom. So something like this. Um, the tutorials will also be through Zoom, but probably using a whiteboard software, so it'll be much more interactive and with smaller groups. And um, a lot of times what will happen is the video uh, lecture won't be live, it'll be put up on our, our um, online learning system, which is Loop. So you'll be able to watch them at, at your uh, leisure. And then, um, yeah, so the virtual le learning environment of Loop. And then um, you'll be able to um, have discussions through uh, online forums, through Loop as well. And then you'll also have remote uh, access to the DC library. Um, regarding laboratories, um, our plan is actually that our first year students would come in on one day, second year students on a second day, and third year students on the third day, for example. So one would be Monday, one would be Tuesday, one would be Wednesday, in order to kind of keep social distancing and keep students in a bubble. Um, what we actually think is going to happen in the case of the higher diploma in engineering analysis technologies is that because you draw from modules across first, second and third year, you may be in campus some weeks, you may be on campus for one to two days, you may be on campus for two to three days, you may be on campus only one day, or there may be weeks where you're not on campus at all, but you would certainly be attending the laboratories with the other students that are, that are in the module with you. Um, so I suppose just to assuage any concerns people may have about online learning, uh, um, DCU is a strong record in online learning. We were one of the first universities to set it up as an offering through the, the, our Doris uh, uh, remote, uh, our remote learning platform. Um, so it's very, very recognized. And um, we've been working very hard to say set up, for example, a robust examination and quality and examination processes for online exams and quality assurance processes. And we were able to move our students uh, online very, very quickly last semester. And obviously with the summer to build up, I think we can give a very, very good learning experience through this online and this hybrid delivery with online learning and in-person labs as well. Um, I suppose just one last couple of little pieces of information, which is that um, if you're coming into the course from with a level eight H22, a H22 degree or higher uh, in another discipline, um, you're more than likely eligible, I've spoken to the program coordinator, you're more than likely eligible to uh, continue your work into the DCU Masters of Engineering program if you want to do an extra year. Our MEng is Engineers Ireland accredited. So what that means is if you do the higher diploma in engineering analysis technology as a one-year program, it's not actually accredited as an engineering degree by Engineers Ireland. It's a level eight qualification that's recognized within Ireland, but from the perspective of international accreditation, say with America or Australia, you are not considered an accredited engineer. You couldn't, for example, become a chartered engineer in two or three years time. However, if you wanted to stay on to do the additional year of the master's uh, project or the master's in, engineer, in engineering here at DCU, with those two years, you can become a, a chartered engineer and uh, are you will be enterprise or engineers Ireland accredited. The major difference or the major challenge is that to be accredited 
by Engineers Ireland, you have to have completed a research project, so a, a kind of final year project, and that's not offered as part of this one year program. And um, the last point to make is that, as you may have seen from the content, this course is quite mathematically focused. That's a very, very valuable skill that you should be learning for the, you know, those analytical skills can be used across a wide range of different future careers in industry. Um, but it can be quite challenging for somebody who's coming from a level seven or a level eight degree. And um, if it's a non-mathematical subject or a non-scientific subject, or if they're coming from industry where they may have been working as an engineer, but they maybe haven't been doing some of the more uh, rigorous maths may not have been required as part of the role. So I would recommend that you have a look at the DCU Maths Learning Centre website, and they have a link there to mathstutor.ac.uk, which helps bridge the mathematics gap between second and third year as well, third level, and can be a really good tool to have a look at, uh, just to remind you of some of the things that may be referred to in lectures that you may just not remember from the leading search, for example. And then um, I suppose the last thing is I haven't updated my slides, but our deadline has actually moved out a week to the 18th. And in fact, maybe moved a little bit further than that. I think you can comment on that in the Q&A. Um, and again, the entry requirements are level eight with a minimum of a H22 and a non-engineering related discipline. And as I mentioned, somebody coming in with those requirements uh, is very likely eligible after a year for our master's course as well. And then if you're coming in with the NFQ level six or seven qualification and five years of relevant engineering industrial experience, that's the other entry requirement. That people with that entry requirement will not be eligible for the masters, just to be aware of that. And uh, finally then the fees are going to be uh, 564 euro if you're coming from employment. And as a Springboard Plus course, if you're unemployed, uh, it's free if you're coming, if you're, if you're not currently employed. So thank you very much. And I think we'll, we'll stop recording and open it for questions.